In this video, we're going to create a stopwatch inside a Blazor project. So first of all, let's go and create a new project. So I'll open Visual Studio 2022, and then we will hit create a new project. From within here, we're going to choose Blazor server app and then say next. We will then call our project a name. We could just call it stopwatch app and say next. I will go and use the .NET 6 framework. You could also use .NET 7. It really doesn't matter in this project. And all the other configurations is OK. So we can just say create. And now when the application is up and running, we can go and open the pages folder. And then we want to open our index.razor file because it is within here we're going to create the stopwatch. So you can just go and delete the code in here. And then I'll go and add a H3 headline where it says simple stopwatch. We also want to display the time of the stopwatch. So I've just made a paragraph where we say time, and then we're going to display the time span. We can then go and create the code section where we're going to include our all our code and our variables. So first of all, let's go and make a private property, which take a time span. And we will just call it time span because that's what we're going to use to display the actual time. And next up, we're going to create three buttons where we're going to have a start button, a stop button, and also a reset button. And when we go and say on click, and then we say a name here, then we have to create the method for whatever name we're going to put in here. As you can see now, it says that start stopwatch does not exist in the current context. And that's because we haven't created the method yet. So to create the method, we just say private. And in this case, we're just going to return void. And then we give it the name start stopwatch exactly as we did in the button. And then we can go and say, what should it do when we click on the start button? So I think we should just go and create all the methods that we have up here. So we will also create the stop stopwatch method and the reset stopwatch method. So just like this, we now have the stop stopwatch method and also the reset stopwatch method. We actually also do need an indicator to see if the stopwatch is already started. So for that, I'm going to create a new property where I'd have a bool that is called is running so that we always know if it's running or not. And of course, when we initialize the page, it should be false to start with so that the timer is not running yet. So the first thing I'll do inside our start stopwatch is actually to check if the watch is already running. So if this is not true, then we should go and start the actual stopwatch. Because let's say that the stopwatch is already running, then we really shouldn't do anything else because it's already running. So if you click start twice, it should just keep going. So what we can do in here is to actually say that it is now running. So we want to set is running to truth if we are coming in here just like this. So we say it is now true. It, it is running if we run this start stopwatch method. And if it's not already running, then we will make it run. And we can actually go and say that these conditions should just be turned around when we come to the stop stopwatch method. So let's just go and copy all this and insert it here. And then we say if it is running, then go and set it to false. But when that's done, we actually need two more properties up here. So the first one is a date time, which is when do we start the time? So when do we hit the start button? And next up, we need a timer. And this is a class that actually create the actual timer so that we can reload the variable every second. So let's try inside our start stopwatch to first go and say, when do we start the time? And when we hit start, we will just say that the time is now because then we will save the time when the button was clicked. Next, we have to create the timer. So we have our property here, which takes a timer. So we can go and say that we want a new timer. And this one will take four parameters. It will take a timer callback, which is actually a method that we're going to create. And we will call it update time. And this method will be executed in this case every second because we here specify the period or the time interval that has to be between 
each execution of this method, we are also able to actually send some information to this method. And that's what we're going to do here. We just specify null because we don't want to add any parameters to this update time. And the zero simply indicates that how, ma how much delay do we have on this timer. And in this case, we don't want any delay. So let's scroll down and create our update time method. So now I created the method called update time. And you can see it takes an object, which is the state. And in this case, we just send null. So you don't really have to think about this parameter. We then have to go and say, what is the time span? And the time span should really just be the time that we have now, where you subtract the start time. So that should give us the time span from when we started the stopwatch. And because this is Blazor, we actually need one line more, which is this invoke async. And the reason we need this is because we need to execute this state has changed. And basically what it does is that it tells Blazor that we want to update the UI with some new values from our variables. So we need to understand that this method is going to be run every second and it will then go and update the view every time. So we should actually be able to start the timer now. But when we stop it, we still need to tell that the timer should stop. So what we can do here is say that the timer should be disposed. So the final thing we have to do is to go into the reset button. And we do want to tell it that the time span should be set to zero. And we will also just, first of all, just go and stop the stopwatch. So now let's go and see how this is working. So I'll just run the application. And we do now have our simple stopwatch it shows a time we have a start stop and reset button and if we hit start we can actually see that we get a lot of numbers that we might don't want to have in it and then we can go and say stop so it will also stop the time and then if we say reset it will just go to zero and then we should be able to start it again but let's try to fix this issue where it shows all the milliseconds also just so that we only get the seconds the minutes and the hours so let's close the application and then what we want to target is actually this time span where we instead of just taking the time span can say that it should be converted to string and that we only want the hours the minutes and the seconds so let's try to save this and run it again and let's try to hit start and as you can see now we don't get all the milliseconds so much cleaner now we can also go and stop it and we can also go and reset it again the last thing i want to do is that when we start the stopwatch and then we hit stop then if we hit start again you can see it will just start at zero again and i don't think that we want that because it should really just go and continue it's only the reset button that really should make it go back to zero. So let's close this application again. So the easiest way to accomplish this, I think, is that we're going to say that we want to subtract the time span that we already have from the time that we have now when we hit start again. Because let's say that we have a stopwatch that has run for five seconds. Then when we start it again, we actually do want it to start from five. So we cannot just say that the date is now. We have to subtract the time that we already have used, in this case, five seconds. So what the start time now would say is that it would start again with the time now, but not really now because it's five seconds ago. And the smart thing about this is that even though you start from zero, then this will just say that the date now should subtract zero from the time span and that will just be the time now. So if we save this and go and open the application again, we can say start and now it will run. I'll just let it run for five seconds. Then we will stop it and then we can say start again and then it will just keep going. And we can say stop and we can also say reset. So it should really be it for a stopwatch inside Blazor. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please go and have a nice day. Bye.